All right, let's, um, I, I believe the Lord really has something special for us here tonight, and I think he's going to encounter us here at the end with a special outpouring as well, a special touch in a unique way, something I believe he's shown me that he's going to do, and it's just amazing. I, I love the worship time, the worship team where you all took us was amazing, and I know that's built on 10 days of, of advancing, and so open heavens are here, and uh, it's just, it, it was wonderful. And, and, and where, you know, it was hard to leave that place because you could just stay there forever. But I believe it's important the things God wants to add, add, add to what he's already been saying during these last 10 days for you. And I may, you know, I don't know. I haven't heard even the message from people before me, so I don't know what will already have been covered. And I mentioned this morning that Elizabeth, you know, she's, she'll be hitting upon the seasons, our seasons with God, our personal seasons, the seasons of our soul. And um, I'm speaking even by me just telling you about our book, Seven Mountain Renaissance, Vision and Strategy through 2050. I'm telling you what I believe is a season for the body of Christ. We're in the kingdom age. This is not the wrap it up time as far as, you know, the next month or two or year or two or anything else like that. There is too much to do. We have just started. We're in the spring season of the kingdom age. And we're going to see incredible manifestations of the kingdom of God on planet earth. Not just in the church. We've known how to just say, uh, and to love, and I do too. When he comes in church, he blasts us. And, and you know, he even releases gold dust and, and gems and, and feathers. And there's all the stuff that happens in the household of God, plus healings, wonderful. We also need to see the equivalent of that in every one of the seven mountains. What is it that shows the awesomeness and greatness of our king in every area of society. And the kingdom of God is designed to show up not just in our free time, not just nights and weekends and special conferences. The kingdom of God is meant to show up in our nine to five life and world. And that's what reformation is all about. And uh, revival is good. I say that's the difference between revival and reformation. Revival is that which happens in our free time. Nights and weekends, reformations, what happens in our nine to five life. And we have seen very little of the nine to five life because we, we've not had expectation. We didn't know you do th something there. And, and then when we think through the nine to five, we, do, we think it's just about getting people saved or healed in the nine to five world. But it really is about being, bringing God's better way of doing everything into every area of society on earth as it is in heaven. How does heaven, heaven function? How does government function in heaven? How does education function in heaven? How does creativity function in heaven? How do the seven mountains, they all do function in heaven. How do they function? How are they designed to function on earth, on earth as it is in heaven? And when that happens, it begins to bring um, restoration in every area of society. And we are really, really, really accelerating into those days. These, they we're in revolutionary days. United States is in the crosshairs of everything because they're in a position of lead nation. And as lead nation, there are some things the Lord has to do there first. Or, you know, other nations can have some things happening simultaneously. But there is, you know, what is happening there um, is really because God is, is preparing this to go uh, in a, in a, worldwide, in a worldwide scope and scale of things. And um, so, and I, I know you've heard some, uh, some speaking into that. I'm really not going to get into that unless the, the Holy Spirit has me jump over there. I'm going to speak into the matter of justice in a moment here and, and the season of justice and, and what it means uh, for, the body, for the body of Christ, for us, for the nations. Just as it relates to Canada, I felt to, to say this. You know, I, I released a, a recent prophetic word, and on my Facebook, it's amazing. And it was, again, primarily for the United States and where the Lord's carrying him. And it was amazing how many Canadians spoke on there, and you could feel the pain they're feeling for their nation right now. And, and there is a sense of we're in trouble, and, and we need help, and we need God. And, you know, there's repentance, and, and I love the, uh, the way the Canadians, will say, came out of the... Uh, Facebook woodwork to identify, and, and, and you all are amazing how you carry your nation in your heart. And, and, and so, though it's 
a big nation geographically, maybe not so much so a population, but there is, uh, there is an ability to identify there's people from east or west um, all the way and just, uh, just really caring a heart for your nation. And I, I just, uh, if you haven't heard it, I, assume, I, I imagine with the prophetic people you've had this week, you've probably got good prophetic words that you're, you're going to be okay. And if you didn't get that, well, you, you need to get that. Nothing has been lost of the things that have been prophesied for you as a nation. And um, there is, you have such a call. Uh, you're, you're called to be, I got that years and years ago, even the maple leaf, the red maple leaf. There, it's about healing, and you're, you have a call to bring healing to the nations. And it's healing of physical bodies, but it's healing of nations as well. And, and you have this unique call as Canadians, you you have a, your passport readily goes anywhere and everywhere. You know, America, United States passport, it's not accepted in very well in a lot of places. Uh, but it's amazing. You go under radar. You have this gift to go under, under radar. And, and, and because of, um, it's part of the grace that the Lord has on you and, and for you. But one of the things the Lord began to speak to me for you at this time, he was out of your, uh, out of your national anthem. And he said he's going to fulfill your national anthem, and the parts he highlighted uh, to me, you know, there's God keep our land glorious and free, and every time that national anthem is sung, he says, you're prophesying, he says, the people who don't even want God in the country are prophesying that, because it's there, and you, you know, it bothered some of you that they tinkered with your, your anthem, and there's no longer your sons, uh, and it's now us, just, yeah. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's really, I hope it didn't bother you too much. You're not like going to hell for a year as a nation because of, of that. It's, it's probably long overdue because the daughters are very valuable. Canadian daughters are very, very valuable. And, um, you know, that's, it, it just gives me an opportunity to speak into the fact that sometimes as the body of Christ, we do just overreact to everything that's going on. And, and um, I want to say something... I'm going to say very little controversial, hopefully, tonight, but I'll say something controversial right now, so just be prepared. Are you prepared? All right. Conservative does, conservative does not equal the kingdom of God, okay? And, um, and you know, uh, I don't know if you use the term left wing and right wing here. We do that a lot in the United States, and so the liberals are the left wing, and the conservatives are the right wing, and so you know a lot of Christians think the conservative right wing is the way, is a way to, to go the most. And you know either wing, if you fly a plane, anything that flies with one wing, you will do a death spiral before it's over. And there are things that are good about being conservative. If conservative and traditional is about being God, family, country, that's awesome. But you have to remember that there's a part of what's traditional conservative means not changing. You just hang on to the same everything. And so that group has been historically in the United States, could be the same in Canada, is, are been the ones late to the table in addressing advances that need to be made on behalf of the races. It was the church, all the churches except for the Quakers in the United States for over 200 years that were massively against racism being eliminated. And they used biblical foundations of predestination. But this is where they were predestined by God. There are societal consequences of bad doctrine. That's in my book, Seven Mountain Renaissance. It's not just an argument for the church. There's a societal consequence, and it was specifically argued that way. And so you have, uh, they're, they're often, you know, atheists in the United States were for slaves, for there being no more slavery, but the church using scriptures uh, and using not, it's just specific doctrines even really taught by Calvin as, as uh, predestination being the strongest one we'll go right now, they, they were the ones against the change and against reformation, against advancement. So we've been the ones uh, slow to understand the need for emancipation and as well as the proper gender empowering of women. And, um, and, it was, and it was not the conservative, 
It was not the conservative traditional mindset that worked to reform. Now, I see, I think through a reformer's grid. And so when I think traditional and conservative, I don't see reformation as being a high value there. I like the conservative part of God, family, country, but God is, you know, I'd say God is a progressive traditionalist or something like that. He, got, he has both wings. And, and yeah, he, our God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But what doesn't change about him is, is that he's, he's always moving forward. Remember the children of Israel? They had to follow the cloud. You move with the cloud. The cloud was always moving. And he's always telling us, sing a new song. Get the new wineskin. You know, there's the new and move, move forward. So you don't want to just dig your heels in and put concrete around your feet and identify yourself with something uh, too much that's, uh, you know, that has a lot of good, good to it. And I, again, that's just being controversial, give you a little free stuff. So here's the deal. I know most believers in Canada preferred, loved Stephen Harper, prime minister, and he did awesome things, and he was a great friend to Israel, and there are blessings still coming on this nation because of him. But I'm really not sure that the church advanced all that much while he was in. Often the church advances more when the one that's not idealized is in there. Because all of a sudden we awaken to uh, what we need to do. Uh, which connects to our whole seven mountain message that we're continually preaching uh, to, the, to the body of Christ. So, you know, God has great things for, and I'll just go ahead and jump from that. So just for Canada, uh, your destiny, your call is secure. You're going to be a blessing. You're going to be a blessing to the nations. Things that God is doing in the United States, just watch it because there's a big splash over coming here of the good stuff. Right now, there's a lot of confusion. We'll even explain that as we go through the rest of, rest of this night. But, you know, uh, just something interesting connected to all this and about learning how to show up in society. Again, sometimes when we have the leader we like there, we get passive. We're just good in church. We don't have a passion to be salt and light. We don't care to show up nine to five and carry solutions, presence, anointing. We don't know how to think through that grid. Nobody's taught us. And so we just... We just don't care. But all of a sudden, when we don't have the leadership we want, we're like, oh, my goodness. We need to be salt and light. And, and so, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, there's a good tension there, but we actually need to step into it as never before. See, the word Jesus used, this is not the message. This is just a two-minute primer, perhaps. When Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, he clearly establishes the power that he's given the authority into his church that even gates of hell could not come against, hold back what he's releasing through the church. But the word church is what's often we, we, we're not aware of the word Jesus used because the word he used was the word ecclesia. Well, you've heard that now. Yeah, ecclesia means church. Well, it was not a religious word in Jesus' day. They had two religious words for church. One was temple, one was synagogue. He did not say, I will build my synagogue. He did not say, I will build my temple. He specifically used a non-religious word. And the specific definition of the word ecclesia, we're doing a lot of specific stuff here, is a gathering of citizens called out from their homes into some public place. Then the part two of it, an assembly of the people convened at the public place of the council for the purpose of deliberating. So he came and said, you know, you attached that to his original message. You are the salt of the earth. If you don't bring salt, it will rot and then it'll come trample you. You are the light of the world. Again, reinforcing this Reformation focus, transformation focus, seven mountain focus that we're saying over and over again. He called us to be the ecclesia. He did not say, I will build my temple where you have meetings on weekends and nights, and that's what will triumph. I will build my called out ones, citizens who leave their home and show up in the middle of society, in the middle of seven mountains, and deliberate and bring the kingdom of God there. So just... Channel your frustration at your present government towards activating the ecclesia within you and speaking into that. 
Y'all good with that? Last thing on Canada. Yeah, he wrote, freedom is priority like two times in your short national anthem. God keep our land glorious and free. He says, you're going to be glorious. It's going to be a land of glory. For real, for real. And, uh, and free. And then, um, you know, we carry that as well, the United States, land of the free. But you carry it twice, this emphasis of free. And you want to value freedom. The kingdom of God does not come through imposition. So don't fall too much in love with bringing the kingdom just through laws. It's good if laws are accepted by the people or in some way reflect how the people's hearts and minds are being affected. If not, they just violate them anyway. Anyway, you know, we have laws. I don't know if you have laws against drunkenness. Do people still get drunk? So law may not take care of everything. So we want to understand that we have an assignment to change the hearts and minds of people. Now, I want to speak a little bit on this subject of justice and what God is doing right now in the world, in our nation. And first of all, I want to take away justice from being a bad word. I have people so many places, well, I'm, I'm crying out for his grace. I'm crying out for his mercy, like not his justice. And we've partially misunderstood what justice is. You know, we have... Elizabeth was telling you four daughters. We have promise, justice, grace, and glory. All four of them were names given to us by the Lord. Promise, joy, justice, hope, grace, Victoria, glory, Ruth. And they were, we had different names picked out for all of them, but there was an attached, associated, prophetic message with each one. And there are things each have faced of difficulty, challenges, and blessings in their life associated with what's taking place at that same time. In society, but we have our two daughters side by side are justice and grace. They're best friends. And um, it's interesting because one carries more the, the justice thing. That's not fair. Another one carries the grace. She's the easiest child. Uh, and the other one's color. You're Miss Perfect. And, um, and so, but in it, there's a beauty to who justice is, justice, hope, and a beauty to grace. Victoria, Grace Victoria is three years younger than her, and she's shorter than her, but she's always been stronger than her. And, and, and you know, it's amazing. They're 10 and 13, and Justice will be run, Dad, Dad, Grace, and mad at If Grace was mad at you, you've had it, because there's no holding back from Grace, and you cannot stop Grace. And so, your Scripture says, you know, so we got it's, you know, mercy triumphs over judgment. And so, Grace triumphs that... Our heart, our God's heart is always towards showing and showcasing grace. But justice is the foundation of his throne. It talks about uh, David, uh, speaking of King David in 2 Samuel 8, 5, says, And David reigned over all Israel and executed judgment and justice unto all the people. And I'll just give you another scripture there just to help maybe shift your, your thoughts towards justice. Psalms 82, 3. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. See how that, um, it's, it's not, what we, it's, it's, justice is not really about the bad guy getting his comeuppance. It's about the mistreated one being rescued. So you need to always be for justice. Now in that, in the little guy or the one being abused or taken advantage, in his rescue, Eric, there is a possibility that the evildoer is, you know, he faces justice in the way we would think of. But that's not the biblical joy of justice. The biblical joy of justice is the case of those who haven't had, who have been overlooked in some way, are now receiving from the Lord. Psalm 89, 14, justice and judgment are the habitation of his throne, another Scripture, the foundation of his throne. So justice is a foundation of it, you know, and, and there is, in Isaiah 59, he talks about, there was a complaint from God. No, no one calls for justice. So justice is important, and this is a time and season for justice. And uh, for those who've been following my prophetic words, it's been a recurring theme a lot in the last several months. And for the last year and a half or two years, our daughter Justice has been going through it's amazing what she's walked through. Amazing pain, um, challenges, um, emergency rooms, and surgery, and, and her body being attacked. And 
And so, and the Lord speaks to me at the same time. It's like, yeah, we have to dress it. You know, we have to look at it and get advice and medical opinions and do the right things personally. But it's like, this is what's going on overall, especially in the United States. But in, I, I'm, it's really, it's worldwide. The justice theme is worldwide. The uncoverings that are taking place are worldwide. And, um, and it, you know, there was a big situation where justice last year, she participated in, in beauty pageants, and, um, and she presented herself in a preliminary stage in Hollywood. She was on a stage in the heart, you know, in the heart of Hollywood, and she just was able to announce herself, I'm Justice Enlow, and she uh, almost immediately, you know, she barely was able to finish that, and, and right behind, she just got back, and she just collapsed in pain after announcing herself, and three, we had to take her to the hospital and she was there for three days and an excruciating pain. That's where we began to find out the things that were attacking uh, her body and her re reproductive areas being attacked. Um, and so there was a rescue there through surgery. And so this has been uh, so prophetic because it was like a week after that, that the whole Me Too movement began with Harvey Weinstein being uncovered in Hollywood and it, you know, it started out of, out of Hollywood, the identifying of directors, producers, but specifically Harvey Weinstein, all of a sudden not getting away with what they used to get away with before. And so it was reckoned as a prophetic act, my daughter standing up, desiring for the beauty of justice to shine in Hollywood, and just in her able, being able to announce, I am justice and I'm here, even though there is a backlash against her, um, it is something that's working, and now we're, we're, the next waves are really, really advancing and coming, and we have seen it. It's going on in government right now in the United States, and there are just uh, really incredible uh, uh, removals of people who have been in power, who have been embedded corruptively in a corrupt positions, and really hundreds of people in the tops of all the seven mountains have been taken out in the last year in the United States. In every, they, they've been caught... Uh, in violation of just respecting women in a proper way, and it's literally hundreds and scores and scores and scores of household names, and it's just, it's about to go to the next level right now in the United States. And so this theme of justice, the justice of God, is something that we're in the throngs of, but it's, 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 a, it's a great story. It's awesome because it means he's coming and he's looking after those who've been taken advantage of. We know the next, it's not just next, but it's on the table right now. The sex trafficking thing that's just got out of, it's just out of control. It's just like 27 million involved in sex trade around the world. And, and now what most people don't know, it's, it's somewhere in the vicinity of 5,000 uh, in just the last few months that have been arrested uh, for their parts in being in the sex trade industry in the United States, and thousands of kids have been rescued, and that's going to go to the next. Yeah. And so you, you can see it's, it's a good thing when that happens. So you, we don't want to say, no, I'm not praying for justice. I'm praying for grace. Well, grace for them is that justice come about, you know, mercy and grace. And so we want to, we want to uh, expand our hearts and, and, uh, and understand this is what he's, he's coming for and what he's coming to do right now. So what I'm going to uh, share right now is somebody was putting that up a, a little bit, and I'll tell them which. Uh, I want to tell a little bit of a story that we're going to put up two or three maximum of four short little YouTube clips. Because God is telling a story, for those again who've been following me, there's a story just keeps better, keeps getting better and better um, with horse racing. Horse racing in the United States, I don't know how much you follow it, but there's the Triple Crown, the United States, you know, there's the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness and the Belmont, and we just had our first Triple crown. It's very rare, but we had our first one in 37 years in 2015, and then we had another one this year, and it is such a true prophetic word that it's like, if I doubt every other prophetic word anybody's saying, because we see in part and we prophesy in part, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is unbelievable. It is so clear, the message, and the purpose of why I want to share this with you, it's, it will, it's going to rejoice your heart. It's going to... Um, Confirmed to you, God's on the throne. 
It's going to confirm he's going to win and, and that he is winning. And, it's, and, it's, and it really, uh, the storyline with it really just tells what has, has been taking, what has been taking place. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit of the story. Then we're going to show you some of the clips because in seeing it in real life, there's an effect to us. And there are different parts of the story that are going to reg, res, reg, resonate, resonate, register, res, you know. I'm just trying to just co combine all the words into one, but they really have to do two. Register and resonate, or you get resignate, and that's really not where we're going with it. So, um, so here's the, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to tell, and hopefully you can keep track with this story, and hopefully you knew some of these uh, storylines. But in 2015, there was a horse named American Pharaoh, of all things. And American Pharaoh run the Triple Crown, these three big races. Again, the, these, these races have been going on for about 150 years in the United States. And they're the ones that are watched the most. And the horses that win these, they go on to, you know, they, they go on to make a minimum of $25 million just in, in uh, siring fees, uh, what, what takes place after that. So American Pharaoh, a prophetic word I gave that came out in Elijah List, even in 2015, the Lord showed me more later and I spoke at another church, is that American Pharaoh spoke into the next season that was coming for the United States. And that even a president, at that time there had not even been announced any candidates in 2015, that um, the United States, I gave a word, the United States was going to have the next president was going to be a Pharaoh of sorts. And he would fulfill the role of two pharaohs in the Bible. There was the one pharaoh that we know of that you know, didn't let the children of Israel go. And, and so the plagues and, and things had to come on him. But it was the, you know, the key thing there, and the Lord hardened the heart of pharaoh. And so the Lord showed me the word I gave is that he was going to be a pharaoh, that the Lord was going to harden his heart, but in a unique way, specifically towards rogue nations. And I specifically mentioned North Korea, Iran, and enemies of Israel. And that he was going to be hardened by the Lord towards them because it was time to deal with them. I said the second thing, he's going to be like the Pharaoh in Joseph's day. Because Joseph is the one that you know, interpreted the dreams for Pharaoh. And so all of Egypt was saved. And it represents being the leader at a time where there is a real big financial provision that takes place, bonanza. And, um, and the name Pharaoh actually means big palace, prosperity. So I said our next president is going to call to be hard line against certain things, and he's going to make the nation very strong economically. And that, that's what the Lord is speaking through the American Pharaoh uh, storyline there. And this year, then I was watching the horse races because we're, we're in such an amazing year. This year, Israel turned 70 years old, you know, uh, in June. And uh, it was right in between the three, the May, June races of the Triple Crown. Israel, you know, Jerusalem turned 50 years old last year in 70. And 70 is this whole key year if you're out of captivity. Uh, if you go biblically, we don't have time for all that. But it's a special year. And we're just in, uh, we just celebrated 500 years since the Protestant Reformation. And um, that's huge because we're now entering into the Reformation 2.0. The first Reformation was you know, how do we get to heaven? It's by the blood of Jesus only. That's why we protested. We protested against the idea that you have to buy or sell indulgences or do something through the priest. Literally, that's why we protested. The protest was, no, it's only by faith in the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus and only the blood of Jesus. An important victory, but it really wasn't almost worthy to be called reformation because it didn't go into societal reformation at all. So now we're going to go, the 2.0 of the reformation is not just how do we get to heaven, but how does heaven now get into earth? How, so, how shall we then live? Not just how shall we then get to heaven? So that's, you know, so these things have been taking place. We just had the most unusual alignment of the constellations. We had these four blood moons. We had a very rare 
uh, lunar eclipse just happened, it, you know, one in a hundred years, very rare solar eclipse, all these things in one shot, and you had, again, the people who either took advantage of it or they're just uh, wired into their doom and gloom. And so they sold books and, and uh, told the body of Christ that Jesus was coming any moment. And I, I, you know, I was countering and contesting that at all times. I was like, it's a special season, but it's not that season. So this year, it is, it's just been a very, very, very key year. So here's part of the story. Early in the year in May, it's actually interesting. I think it was April 23rd. I looked it up on YouTube. Just found it. Um, Bill Johnson. You know Bill Johnson from Bethel? Awesome. Uh, just an incredible man of God. And just carries the heart of the Lord, especially the, you know, the, the spirit of good news of, him, uh, of the Lord. And so he had a message um, in April 23rd called Promises Fulfilled. I didn't even listen to the message. I just saw, I actually just found it today, Elizabeth, when I was looking through this stuff. But his message, April 23rd, was promises fulfilled. And how, uh, and I th he's followed it up with other messages on our, our promise keeper. Our promise maker is our promise keeper and how God wants us to hold us on to promises. This has been very frustrating for the body of Christ as it relates to promises because it's like they're just not happening. They're not going to happen. And so there's been a lot of, uh, we'll say, angst about that in the body of Christ. And really the Lord is desiring to encourage us that we want to hold on to promises he's made us and he's the God who wants to fulfill promises. So anyway, the message is promises fulfilled. Ten days later, 10 or 11, I think it was May 4th, there is a race in, a horse race in Florida called the Fountain of Youth. Interesting, that week the Lord began to be speaking to me on the Fountain of Youth and that he's going to begin to touch his sons and daughters. And like Caleb, who at 85, said, I'm as strong now as I was when I was 40. Give me my mountain. That he was, he was going to begin to awaken. And, and, you know, that's part of why he had to just change this narrative that so many of the uh, advanced age in the body of Christ are just ready to park and go and, you know, Jesus take me and all that. It's like, no, give me my mountain instead of, you know, I'll fly away, oh glory. And so, and, and that there's promises that haven't been fulfilled. And they're just like, okay, I'm done with it. Just take me. And he's like, no, no, no. Promises, I want to fulfill them. And so there's a fountain of youth and literally we're going to start seeing uh, those who buy into this begin to physically change and get younger and get stronger, and that this is going to be something we're going to see. And so he was telling me that. So the, the name of the race is Fountain of Youth. And the horse that was favored to win Fountain of Youth was a horse called Good Magic. Good Magic was the two-year-old horse of the year last year, and this is now when the three-year-olds run in the race. And that's, you know, all the, the Triple Crown races are run by horses when they're three years old. And good magic, if you look up the word magic, you know, magic doesn't sound so bad if you think of it just, you know, especially where we are, magic kingdom, oh, it's fun. But magic, if you look up the definition, it's like alternative power. It's sleight of hand. It has to do with deceit and, and trickery. And you're doing something here and something over here. And so good magic has been there. And so that was a favorite horse. But guess who won the race? There's a, there's a horse named Promises Fulfilled. 18 to 1 odds against it winning, and it won. And uh, I don't even have that in my clip here, but that's, that's just an exciting race to, to watch as well. Can you imagine that? A race called Promises Fulfilled wins the Fountain of Youth Stakes. And so that's how the season started out this year. And I'm like, oh, my. I wrote a whole prophetic uh, word on that and released it on Facebook. I met that one, I'm not sure if I, it went on Elijah List or not. But it's a word for you. Again, this is for those who are in advanced years that he's speaking to. It's at a fountain of youth event that he has an 18 to 1, 18 to 1, because this year, 2018, is a year to grab a hold of this thing as never before. There's something taking place. So anyway, then we got to... Our first race, the first big race, the Kentucky Derby. Now, what was unique about the Kentucky Derby and then the Preakness and then the Belmont? These are the three big ones in the United States. Is um, The first two races were, were run in terrible conditions. The Kentucky Derby, that day they had the most rain they had ever had. It was the muddiest day ever 
for, the, uh, for a race. And the most rain, the most mud, and, and we're going to uh, and just get that first one prepared for in just a moment to show them. And, um, and so a horse, again, the favorite horse, it was like, okay, we don't know what happened to good magic with promises fulfilled, but now this is the big races. Those are, those are secondary races. It's in the big one. And, and again, good magic is still coming into the season. It's considered the favored, you know, the, if you're voting ahead of time, what's the horse that has a chance to go win any of the triple crown races or all of them? It's good magic. But all of a sudden, about a month before then, there's this horse that just started winning two or three huge races and running away from the opposition in lesser, in lesser races. And this is a horse that I want to talk to you about. And the name of this horse is Justify. Now, Justify, just to go ahead and get to the punchline, Justify won the Triple Crown this year. And Justify, you also find out that the owners named it. They said, where'd you get the name? He says, well, we like to give them strong names. And we got it out of the book of Romans. <laughs> justified by faith. Justified by the blood of Jesus. Justified by grace. It's what he does. And so this horse named Justify comes out. And so then it's all of a sudden, this guy looks like he's going to take good magic even. And sure enough, he does in a, in a, in a muddy track. Now, back to promises fulfilled for a moment. Promises fulfilled, the trainer of promises fulfilled is, his last name is Romans. His name is Dale Romans. <laughs> and it's specifically in the book of Romans, I wrote Romans 5, 8 says Jesus Christ, but essentially tells us that Jesus Christ is the one that confirmed the promises made to the Father. And, and so... Promises fulfilled also did run this first race, but he was, they knew already he could not, because of the length of the race, this was not going to be his race, but it was going to be key if he set a, a fat, if he was able to come in and, and set a fast pace, promises fulfilled would help justify. If you could put on our first YouTube two minute race clip. Y'all with me? How muddy the track is.
And look at the horse. If you can freeze it, I don't know if you can freeze it right there. Oh, you can't freeze it right there. Anyway, if, if they were able to freeze it there. Okay, look, Justify is the only clean horse. Every other one on the whole race is muddy. Every, the, the, the jockey is, uh, he's clean as can be, and everybody else behind them, and this is a theme throughout all three races. At the, they'll have all these pictures at the end, and Justify is as clean as can be, and the other ones are filthy at, when, it's, when it's all done. So stop there for a moment. Part of a prophetic word we've been seeing and giving is in the United States, you know, there's this, the whole thing of fake news and counterfeit news and pretend news, and it's a muddy track that's being run right now. And there is this good magic, this deceiving sleight of hand alternative power that's manipulating and trying to set the agenda of things. And, um, and so we see that even in, in the midst of that, this, this, I, I've been telling for our audience in the United States that this has been where we've been. It's been a very muddy track. It's been very hard to see what's, what's taking place. But again, we found out, and those who commented after, it's very key that promises fulfilled set a fast track for everything. And so promises fulfilled is awesome because it's about our personal call and gain that the Lord has, but justified is, that's his big picture, justified by the blood. And so our little, our little story is important, but justify is, is, a, is a bigger story uh, th than all that. So in that, all right, again, I like watching it because it just helps it um, register and, and, and come home the most. I want to see if there's anything else I wanted to tell about that part. It seemed like there's one last thing I wanted to tell about that first race before we get to, to the next one. We'll just, if I, I'll, I'll, I'll hit it. So the next one is, no, um, don't hit it yet. I will just tell you about it. Uh, I didn't do it for time's sake. The second race was the Preakness. And the first one was the, ra uh, that one was the rainiest, muddiest track ever. The next one was the rainiest, foggiest ever. And again, it was good magic again. And they go into the fog and the announcer can't even see them. And, and, it's, and there are, there's like, I, and I think good magic is slightly ahead of him. And it says they're coming through and they're coming through the fall and it's justified. And it's, going to, it's, you know, it's just being played out, this whole thing in, in front of everywhere, everyone. And so justify wins the preakness. And, and uh, I knew even, at, you know, good magic gave it all. And I was telling, I was, I was watching, I said, good magic's not coming back from that. Good magic's spirit was just broken. It's not happening. Sure enough, the owner uh, or whoever the trainer of Good Magic didn't even try to bring that horse back for the third race. It was known like it's not going to happen. You might have been, again, that was the two-year-old horse of the year that's generally the favorite to be the three-year-old horse of the year, but it was not going to have a chance against Justify. So the one I want to show you is where Justify wins the Triple Crown because that's the big, big deal. It was very rare again. American Pharaoh won it for the first time in many years, and... Um, and this is now a, a clear track, and I will tell you about a, a, a horse that's going to show up. Promises fulfilled was key on the first one. I told you about promises fulfilled. Again, this is, this is supposed to be prophesying to you as well. Promises fulfilled, promises fulfilled, justify God's story, God's agenda. And this particular race, promises fulfilled, did not race in the other two uh, it already had an intense season before then. But there's a horse that was also trained by the same trainer as Bob Baffert, who trained Justify. And his horse did the same role that Promises Fulfilled had in the first, uh, the first race. And that horse is restored hope, restoring hope. And what was a blessing for me, you have to understand, my eldest daughter is Promises, Promises, her name. And she's had some challenges. So for me, I got this whole personal blessing from this season as well. And then my second daughter, her name is Justice Hope. And she's been under assault and attack, and I've been awake many nights uh, with her. And you're going to see that it's going to be Justify and Restored Hope. Justify, Restore Hope. And they're going to be the ones that, uh, again... Uh, after the race, they're like, did Bob Baff, did he, did he it, it cheat essentially by bringing, because what happens is Justify takes the inside position, Restoring Hope comes on the outside, and there was no way for a horse was going to have to come on the outside of that to challenge him. It wouldn't matter anyway, Justify was going to beat him, but Restoring Hope, 
uh, did the same, the same role uh, for Justify. I know what I was going to tell you. In that first race, Justify was number seven um, also, which connects to me in so many things. Seven spirits of God going to the seven mountains. The justice of God has to show up in every area of society. In the second race, we didn't watch. Justify was number seven as well. This race, he now has the inside track. And so this even speaks, he's now number one, uh, Justify. But it speaks of justice even in America. There's this thing that's been taking place. It's been on kind of an outside position, but still winning. And now the justice is on the inside. Again, the good news is like our daughter Justice had her first week of pretty much painlessness in two years. And so justice is, is getting healthy. Uh, uh, and so we're, we're getting that. But let's just uh, watch this and see if you get some impartation from a horse race. I like the names up there. Justify, Restoring Hope. He's still all clean, all clean, totally. Justify us that just more than that announcer even understands how he's prophesied. And justice is just perfect. And justice is immortal. And justice has done it. As it turns out, that's the last race Justify will ever run. They had a little ankle issue. And so they said, well, we're going to skip the next race season. And he's going to go into being a sire because somebody is ready to pay $75 million for him to be uh, for siring charges, studying fees, they call. And so he's now going into reproduction. So Justify is going into reproduction, so justice has to be reproduced. And so he was the first triple crown ever in the United States to retire undefeated. Uh, and he only uh, r ran uh, six times total, and he won all of them, but it was just amazing. So there's a little one, just a minute, that says... I don't think it's number three, it might be number four. It's the one that says Mike Smith. He's the jockey uh, that ran in all three. And this is what he said at the end of every one of his races. But this is after the Triple Crown. You have to see, see this um, if, if they're able to find that one as well. And this will bless you as well. 
get good volume on it. You can, you can stop that one. And again, he's rearing red. And this is, if you know our seven mountain code, red is, a, is the color we associate with the mountain of media. And so this is where there's been this massive battle on the mountain of media. What's real, what's not, what's fake news, what's real news, what's magic, what's good magic, what's uh, pretend news, and what's the real thing. So, all right, a little, uh, just a, a, a little bit more. I want to tell you the story because this heads to ministry time. And something the Lord wants to do um, here with us, I believe. What's so exciting about uh, Justify, or one aspect of them, I don't know, how many of you have ever heard of the horse secretariat? Okay, well, it was a big deal here too. Well, the good, that, that helps the story. Well, in 1973, secretariat was the triple crown winner. And what was, uh, you know, they, they had largely assumed... I think 1948 was the last Triple Crown before the incitation. There was not going to be another Triple Crown. It was just too tough. And, um, and this, this horse, Secretariat, was just, it, it was just amazing how he, he, uh, he, he sh showed up and developed. And, and uh, he was just such a unique horse in so many ways. When he won the Triple Crown... They just were, they, they were in awe. It's still considered, and that's what I'm going to show you in just a moment, the greatest horse race ever in the history of horse racing because he, picked, he kept finding new gears, and they just found out no matter who his opposition was, that he would, uh, he, he, he had, an, he always like, how does he always have another gear? Like, it defied horse racing logic to begin that year, the horse, this is how it coincides and is parallel with this year. The horse that was number one and actually the triple crown favorite, it was a lightning fast horse. And it was a horse that was supposed to win the triple crown before Secretariat showed up. And it was a horse uh, named Sham. And Sham was the great rival the first two races, the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness, it was Sham that was... In, in both of them, uh, Secretariat put him away by two and a half lengths. But there's, the similarity is this. Do you know the word sham, what it means? I'll, I'll, I'll read what it means. A thing, not what it is purported to be. Fake, pretend, feigned, simulated, contrived, false, make-believe, mock, fraudulent, phony. It's like... What good magic is to justify this year is what sham was in 1973. There have been prophetic words. In fact, I think Paul Keith Davis has given prophetic words to the Lord. He had an encounter with the Lord or something that the church was going to be like secretariat. It was going to arise and it was going to do things and it was going to be uh, amazing. And there's, um, there's a spiritual component to this horse secretariat. But here's, this, here's the deal. Justify comes from secretariat's lineage. And it wasn't until Secretariat died and they did the necropsy on it that they found the key, why this horse was different. And they found the horse, the heart, I think it was something in the vicinity of 25 pounds it weighed. It was two and a half times larger than an average heart. And a third larger than the man doing the necrop necropsy had ever seen on any kind of horse ever. He's like, it was just a monster heart. And it was like, that was the gear. It's like that. They, it, it was, the mystery was solved. That horse had heart. And because it had heart is why it was able to do what it did. Now here's, you know, tied into, I was telling you about ecclesia, an assembly of people convened at the public place of council for the purpose of deliberating. The word secretariat, means a permanent administrative office or department, especially a government one. 
And so you have Justify that comes out of that. And Secretariat was born to a mare named Something Royal. That was the name of Secretariat's mom. Something Royal Secretariat. And so um, there, there, is, there is something that took place then. The Lord is he's telling us, he's telling the body of Christ. And again, they don't know what Justify's heart is, but they're like, that's the pedigree it comes from. And I just think, uh, I don't know, I get, I get thrills every time I see this, this race. And it'll help us go, because here's what I feel like the Lord said he's going to do at the end here. And whoever wants it. That what we, you know, we all can think of the things we, more, we need more of. We need more anointing. We need more money. We need more all this and that and the other. And we need our track to be easier. Uh, less mud in the track, less fog, less bad guys around us. But you know all we need? More heart. And I feel like the Lord said he's going to pour out the upgrade of heart. That's like the new wineskin. It says you can't have new wine without the new wineskin. It's a new heart. It's the expanded heart to carry more of his love, more trust. It's really, you know, love. That's why we don't want to get into, you know, fighting all kinds of things with society. But it's it's his courage, his heart. And so even as you're seeing this, I believe there's an impartation for it. just watching. You're going to see Secretariat seriously challenged by Sham early on. And then Sham is put away. So if you can put that on there. Huh? He was faster. That's still the fastest race ever. It was 224. And he won by 31 lengths. And he was going faster at the end. They were just like, where did that gear come from? Of course, 224. Scripture we use as foundation even for the seven mountain message. Isaiah 2, 2 through 4. In the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord will be exalted in the tops of the mountains. And nations will come running they will come see what's happening in the house of God, the solutions and answers. So I believe that's just, huh? Oh, oh my goodness, I didn't even pick that up, baby. That's my daughter's birthday. Justice's birthday is 224. <laughs> wow. And she turned 24 this year, so. It's her golden birthday, the 24s, or 24 elders around the throne. The just, ooh, the lights just got affected. The justice of God is coming to earth. And he's starting in an accelerated way in the United States. It's already happening. The nation even we're doing a documentary on in Peru, the Supreme Court in the last month, they all just had to resign because crookedness was uncovered in the most blatant way. And so there is this turnover taking place um, all around, but the justice of God is coming, and he's coming on his sons and daughters. He's calling us to be his ecclesia. ecclesia. He's calling us to be the secretariat's dad. <laughs>